All right, so this video we're mostly going to be looking at uh, setting up the player, and let's go back over here to our color sprite and drag this guy uh, onto the scene, and this will be our player. I'm going to give it a name of uh, player, and I'm also going to give it an initial texture. Let's just call it uh, resting, and he looks a little tiny there, doesn't he? But that's okay. He, he actually is pretty tiny. He's probably about appropriate for, uh, you know, something played on the big screen, which obviously this probably would be a TV. And then we're also going to fold this up. And there's our player. Let's go ahead and uh, grab animate with textures. And if you just type in there animate, you'll find it. Animate with textures. And then I'm going to. Uh, go over here to the media library and you can see that you've got all of your images even if they were included in as part of the atlas uh, folder and you can just drag them into here and you can set up an initial animation there we go and if you did want to uh, build and run it, run it at this point you would see that um, I'm just gonna I'm kind of just doing this because I felt that um, when I was setting it up uh, previously this this helped uh, with resizing it I didn't feel like uh, I had to worry about that um, the animations getting uh, kind of squished or squashed uh, so that's one of the reasons I'm doing it another one is just to show you guys that you can animate with textures on any of your objects other than you know it doesn't have to be the player so if you want to have like a, a lit torch in the background or something like that and also too this is something that you can uh, animate as well so uh, we've you know, basically we've got this guy set up again I'm not going to worry about setting up the the physics properties in here because I'm going to do that in a, a custom class so I'm going to go and uh, go to a new file and uh, here we go we've got Swift doesn't matter which one of the sources you pick here a Swift file is going to be a Swift file and I'm going to call this player, and then of course you'll see that you've got the player over here. You do want to import in uh, Sprite Kit, and then from there you're going to write class, and just put in there player, and then uh, we're going to pick out the uh, subclass that this is going to be, and this is going to be a subclass of SK Sprite Node, and if you remember that's the uh, type of class that those color sprites, then when we drag them into the, C, the, the game scene uh, .sks file, that's what they are. They're SK sprite nodes. So this is basically extending the functionality of our uh, player right here. And, or I, I should say our, our um, SK sprite node. So one thing we could do is just, let's just test something. Okay, we'll just say test, um, uh, test this, right? What, what better function than that? And I'm going to pull a print statement right here, and we'll just print out this actually ran. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to head back over here to this file. I'm going to select the player, go over here to custom class, and then just type in there player. All right. Uh, we don't have to put anything in there for module. So uh, this little object uh, laid out in the scene here knows that it is actually a, a well, I, I didn't click anything. I, clicking out of it sends me back to game scene. So here we go. Uh, so it's, it knows it's a player. And what we want to do is basically set up a variable inside of our main game scene.swift file uh, to kind of declare that player uh, throughout any function that we want to write. And I also want to, at the same time, call this to see that we actually can. Okay. So quite a few things that we're going to do here. Uh, let's here we'll say var player and um, you know what actually if it's a little confusing you might want to call it the player just so you're not going back and forth between uh, having a lowercase p and then you know having your player class the same thing so we'll call it uh, the player and again that is going to be of that player class uh, I don't think it's a good idea to make this optional even though you could we're just going to go ahead and make it equal to player because let's face it if you're in this game scene you're going to be playing with the player okay so that saves us from having to write exclamation points and question marks throughout you know the rest of this code and uh, then what we'll do is check to see in the did move to view statement if um, that player was actually added into the uh, scene you know this helps prevent a crash just in case you know somehow it got deleted I guess and uh, Probably not the case, but so we're gonna see if self.child knows name player does not equal nil 
And when you write child node with name, that's actually referring to this name right here. Again, if we wanted to be a little bit more clear, I guess I could have put something like the player or player one. And uh, but that's okay. We'll you know something for you to remember. <laughs> now we're gonna say the player is gonna equal self dot child node with name again. And put in their player, and then as player. Okay. Now, if we try to do this without checking to see if this actually existed in here, that would end up causing a crash. Uh, once you've done that, uh, now this little variable right here, this instance variable, knows that the player is of this particular type class, and we could just write the player dot, and you can see it's going to start to fill itself in. Test this. And that's exactly what we want to test. So let's go ahead and save out everything. It does help occasionally to save out your uh, game scene uh, dot swift file or, or dot sks file. And I've also noticed that occasionally you you um, will want to hold down the option key and clean the build folder. If you ever notice that something just isn't right, it did. Uh, you're not seeing what you think you should in the scene or the simulator. Okay, so it uh, looks like this actually uh, ran over here. We're probably not seeing the loop of that animation because it, it, I'm, I'm guessing it, um, or there wasn't a loop, I should say, but um, we, we probably just didn't catch the, uh, the animation because it wasn't looping, and it happened, you know, probably when the scene was initially loading. Anything that happens within that first second over here, kind of expect to not see it. And... I believe, yes, I can actually see him kind of bobbing his head up and down. There's really not much to this idle pose over here. So, and you'll notice too that the, the platform is just kind of running right through this guy. He doesn't have a physics body. It's not affected by gravity or anything like that. And any other object that doesn't have a physics body is just going to get kind of railroaded, <laughs> just run over by something that does have a physics body or really just ignored. So uh, let's go and take care of that. So we're going to be, we're going to go back into our player.swift file. Uh, let's get rid of this function. That was just to make sure that uh, things were actually running. Actually, you know what, instead of getting rid of it entirely, let's call, let's change it to set up uh, player. And then of course, back over here in our game scene.swift file, we'd want to replace that with set up player so we don't get a crash. And let's figure out how to set up this guy. Now, um, if you're familiar with um, kind of programming uh, before, previously with Sprite, Sprite Kit, you might be wondering, oh, wait a minute, we didn't actually do this, um, you know, uh, function, init, or uh, let's see, actually, usually it looks like something like that, right? Override function init. Um, that's all taken care of by just um, like laying out the, the object and having it kind of get initialized in the scene itself. Uh, so nice thing is, is we don't actually have to worry about that, but you know, for doing, for setting up the character, you are gonna actually have to call your own little function here. So for example, set a player. All right, um, we are going to create the physics body. So we're gonna say uh, let body and then SK physics body. This is gonna equal SK physics body and now you might be wondering, oh, wait a minute, why are you doing circle with radius if you could do that nice little alpha mask? I actually think for the characters, it's going to be a bit better to go with the circle of radius. It um, kind of helps them uh, stay on platforms a little bit, and, and uh, there's a few other reasons. But uh, let's just go with it. Just trust me. I think this is a good idea. And <clears throat> we could hard code in a size right here. Another option would be to uh, get the image texture size. Uh, so if you want, you could, even above this line, uh, put in here uh, image texture equals SK texture, and then image uh, named. And then we've got, uh, I think it just, it's just resting is the name of it. Let me just check that. Resting one, I believe, there we go. So you do resting one over here. And then you can just take this image texture and just write dot size. Uh, dot width and um, in a lot of cases this this works out uh, really well you just divide it by two uh, I noticed when I was working with this I, I wanted the size to be a little bit smaller than exactly half of what that texture was so I'm actually going to divide it by 3.5 but just take a little note here in most cases you're going to want this circle of radius to be half of the, of the width all right, so I'm flipping it back to 3.5, and then I'm actually going to offset offset the center of where that physics body occurs, and you do that just right by writing center, and then CG point make, and 
here you can toggle where it's going to be at. And once we get this actually running, I'll show you guys um, kind of the, the differences between you know making that negative 10 or 10, whatever. And, uh, and then we're going to just write uh, self dot physics body is going to equal that body that we just created uh, right here. Uh, and then from that point we can, or even before that, we could set up things like uh, body.dynamic, that's going to equal true. We do want it to be dy dynamic, so it's affected by things that get bump into it. Uh, and really just it's whether or not it's affected by the simula physics simulation at all. Affected by gravity, this is also going to be true. I don't want the body to be, to, um, to be rotated though, okay? I always want it to be like fully upright, otherwise He's essentially going to roll down those ramps or any ramps that we uh, set up. And then, let's see, I've also gotten here x scale equals 1. I can't remember why I put that in, but um, we'll leave it in if my notes have it. Uh, when we start moving him around, we are going to flip him back and forth between, between having an x scale of negative 1 or 1, which just basically makes him you know, face one way or the other. And I think that's enough to get us uh, testing this. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the game view controller and I'm going to make it so that I can actually see the physics body. So I'm going to write in here SK uh, view dot shows. There it is. Shows physics equals true. And of course, you'd never want to run this in real life when you submit your app. But uh, when you're testing, it is nice to see those physics bodies. And let's give it a shot. Okay, there you go. You can see that he's got that uh, that physics body. It would be nice if I could scale this up. Oh, I can scale it up. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let's go a little bit bigger. And let's do it one more time where he's just on the ground. This way you can kind of keep your eye on the physics body without... Oh, well, there we go. Okay, so it looks like his this should go a little bit lower right so let's go over to here and maybe make this negative well if you want to just see the opposite effect let's just run it at 10 real quick so that 10 is going to move where that physics body is on the y-axis and obviously now we don't want this unless we wanted it to seem like he was swimming which is really not you know, it's, not, it's kind of something to remember for later. You know, if you want his legs to be dipping into to water or something like that. Uh, so let's go back and uh, let's try this at maybe negative 13, and hopefully that puts that circular body right at where his feet would be touching the ground. And I think that looks just about perfect right there. Okay, so good sign. Uh, and um, yeah, and obviously he's not falling down through the center of the planet. Uh, that's good too. Okay, let's uh, let's take a quick little break here, and uh, when we come back, what we're gonna do is um, put in uh, or set up some of the uh, animated textures for him.